All right, phenomenal. We are officially live. We just want to double check if everything is working on the streams. We're going to begin in the next 30 seconds. So just hang tight. I can't wait to introduce my guest. I'm going to just uh, make sure that he's off camera right now and I'll bring him on very shortly. Let's just have a quick test. Wonderful. 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 Let me add him to the stage right here. And let me introduce him. So this man is an individual that I've met eight years ago, and we've connected then. We, I reached out to him. I said, hey, I love what you're doing. He said he loves what I'm doing as well. And we just connected. We really connected to eight years ago. And finally, we are here. And before Gershwin says anything, I just want to give you a brief uh, brief back background and brief detailed background on who this man is. And I want him to share a little bit more detail, but I'm going to give the cleft notes. Gershon, are you ready? Man, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm listening. Okay, let's go. So he goes by the name of Dr. G, the love motivator. And I'm going to ask him as well, you know what? How did he come up with that name? But otherwise, he's a five times author. His latest book is entitled Be You, Love You. You can find it at barnesandnobles.com and, of course, any other platform that sells books, especially his website, which is a Grind Daily Gear. That's where you can find all his merchandise, and we'll share some other links as well as we continue. Now, he's also the founder of the Masterpiece Speaking Academy and the Masterpiece Fitness, which I'm sure we'll get into that as well a little bit later, just to share with you a little bit about his background. So he was born in the Emerald Isle of Montserrat. Now, that is a colony of Britain. And of course, in his early years, uh, according to the research that I've done, he loved the Lord and, you know, at an early age, basic things was hard. You know, teachers wrote him off. You know, people made fun of him for various reasons, which he will share with us as well. And he then moved to the UK. And why? Because of a major volcano. So at 16 years old, he lost everything and he had to move. And we really excited to see how he journeyed from where he was to where he is now, which is a five times author, one of UK's top motivational speakers, and he's crossing paths with people like Steve Harvey and Eric Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Dr. G. Gershom Allen. Come on. How are you doing, my brother? Man, I'm excited. What an introduction. Uh, I was out the volcano started in '95. I was 13 years old, okay. and I came to London when I was 15, turning 16. So yeah, that was right. And just want to clarify that uh, www.grinddaylylife.com is where my website is, and I'm excited about what this is happening. You know, yes, we connected eight years ago. Mm -hmm. What I remember that moment uh, when we, uh, you know, we, I reached out to you and uh, we connected there. We spoke for a brief moment. But you know, uh, God always plants a seed. Come and on, it, it, it takes time for it to be watered. Yes, sir. Uh, to be to be matured, to grow up into an oak tree that it cannot be chopped down. So eight years later, we we're here, we're back. It's almost like we never left. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. So eight years later, we have an oak tree right now. We planted the seed eight years ago. So just to confirm again, that's grand, uh, GrindDailyLife.com. And then, of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Grind Daily Gear, especially for the merchandise piece. So feel free to go ahead and check that out whenever we are done this interview. So, Gershom, I was thinking to myself, where do we start? You a man that has so much complexities. I look at you, I see your hat. Let's start off right there. What's that all about? Because I, I see that logo online. Can you share with us what, what was the idea behind that? Well, first of all, let me say thank you to you first. You know, Thank you for actually uh, listening to the voice that led you back to this moment that we are sharing right here. And I'm grateful because you know uh, where your focus goes, your energy flows. And yes, it's sir. very important that we understand my focus is God. Uh, God has inspired the brand. God has inspired 
the the pen, <laughs> God is right, the voice. You know, um, I've got a community of people, knockout time family, every Sunday that really uh go to my YouTube channel and they hear my words, go okay. to my Instagram, go to my LinkedIn, my Twitter, my TikTok, and follow me. And I got a group of people that really follow the voice and the brand was emerged over time, <laughs> over time. You wow. Know, um, you mentioned knockout time. Now mm -hmm. I, I'm 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 picturing somebody knocking someone out. Was that the idea? Who who are you angry at, Gersh? Huh? <laughs> you know, I, I'm angry. I'm not angry. Knockout time is um I love boxing, right? Okay. Um Mike Tyson is is the dude that really revolutionized the idea. I grew up in I was I'm an 80s baby, so Mike okay. Tyson was the one for me. So mm -hmm. for real. Like everybody talk about Muhammad Ali, I, I ain't about to dance around with you for twelve rounds. I ain't mm -hmm. doing that. I believe that Knocker Time came about by the idea of it takes one opportunity to change your life. Um, you know oh, that song by Eminem, "One Shot." All it takes is one shot. Ah. So you know, it's just one punch, one opportunity, uh, one moment, and and it's over. It's it's a wrap. It's done. Um, and I take you to the spiritual side suddenly, immediately. That's my sure. God. He, he, my God talks about immediately and suddenly. He doesn't take long. When God is about to do something for you, if you really focus on it, if you really stay connected with it, God will definitely make it happen in a moment. So, you know, how long did this take to come together in a moment? So true. Um, it just takes one opportunity. So the knockout time and the logo, back to the logo on the hat that's actually a picture of me it was crazy because shout out to Shay, Shay um a phenomenal lady years ago um which I want to tell you more about my story uh the brand in itself was my first speech that's my first speech that I got wow. paid for um uh, in London uh, uh at uh, if I could get get the name of the company that employed me at the time to speak but um, I think it's Inspire, Inspire Biz, something like that. I, I gotta remember which company it was. But they booked me to speak and they paid me $60, 60 pounds. Okay. 60 pounds, my first speaking gig. And um, it was crazy because- 60,000? 60, <laughs> 60, 60 pounds, wow, okay, okay. First speaking gig, and um, it's crazy. It was worth more than 60,000. <laughs> I spoke okay. like- Okay, come on, teach doc, teach. So it was crazy. Um, in that moment, that was me when Muhammad Ali died. So I think Muhammad Ali died the night before. And I paid a tribute to Muhammad Ali in a moment of silence. And I hold the mic above my head like that. Same image, same thing. Wow. And that was that's the reason of the logo. Nobody ever asked me that question. So that's how the logo was born. It was birthed with that moment. So wow. I am the master of the mic. I am the master. Right. I give homage to the greatest of all time. I'm not just the best. I am the greatest of all time. Which Come I'm, on. Um, that God blessed me with the gift. God gave me the gift. And every step from I started this journey in 2009 to hmm. this moment, um, I've been faithful to God in trusting him with the, every step that I've taken. So that, that's the logo. But okay. you, know, the, you know, as as the brand emerges, you know, DRG, you know, doctor of your heart, doctor of your mind, okay. the medicine for your motivation, the okay. medicine for your inspiration, the yes, medicine sir. for your life, and uh, that's exactly how the brand emerges. Mm. And I I didn't go to no marketing school. I didn't go to no branding school. Okay. I really got questions, so I'm not gonna go no deeper than than the brand. But that's that's what you see, you know. Um, it's more than motivation. It's the lifestyle. Gershom, I'm so, and, and I hope you don't mind me calling by your your first name. It just rolls off my tongue. Um, I'm so glad you shared with me that because it gives me an idea on who you really are. So when you said Muhammad Ali, he was the greatest, according to himself, of course, and according to many, he was the greatest of all time. And you holding that mic up, you saying that you in your own way, in your own space, you want to, in your own life and legacy, you want to be the greatest of all times when it comes to 
the word that you have inside of you and imparting it onto others. That's a noble, that's really a, a noble trait of you. And I'm sure we're going to get a bit deeper into also um, your your journey when it comes to meeting people that we look up to, such as your Steve Harveys and your Eric Thomases. And if, if you are on here right now, I just want to thank you for joining. I see we have Etienne, we have Theo, and we have others on the line as well. And today we're going to talk about, we're going to go all the way back, Hersham. So let's start off with being in the Emerald Isle of Montserrat. Now, that sounds like a mouthful, and that sounds like a tongue twister. Can you share with us, like in 60 seconds, what was it like growing up in Montserrat? Man, look, I tell you, if you've ever been in a paradise, if you've ever dreamt of paradise, a beautiful tropical island ah. you know, um, where the temperature is always right, we had a rain, but it's hot, it's warm. Um, you can just pick mangoes, uh, you mm. can pick bananas, you can pick Come on. grapes, you could pick it, it like it was for free. You didn't have to pay for it. Just go for the walk. You know, I, I had animals, I grew up on the land. So, you know, I had a donkey, I had a sheep, I had goat. Wow. I, my father was a farmer, you know, so sure. I grew up on the land. So it was peaceful, it was tranquil, it was a beautiful life, man. Like for real. Um, it was a life that God gave to my mom and dad that, you know, blessed us, blessed me with life that I'm here now. So wow. it, it was paradise. I can't even go no more, no deeper than that. Like for real, for real. Like those people who never got to see the sunrise coming up yeah. over the ocean. I got to see the sun coming up the ocean every morning and I got to see it going down on the ocean. So that's the oh, beauty wow. of 39 and a half square miles of Montserrat, West Indies, which I, I grew up and loved. Now, I can't just imagine you sharing that with me right now, Gershom, and the fact that you're no longer there, I can just imagine a part of you, how much it must miss that. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And now this begs the question, that turning point, and of course, w this can be a three-hour interview, but of course, we're going to condense it. However, that turning point, Gershom, when it came to you being in Montserrat and you no longer being in there, can you just take us all, can you just bring us all to that point? You know, the craziest thing, so here was I, um, this cool, normal day, phenomenal day, and, you know, I went home back to the countryside, and we heard this noise in the mountain uh we had low cloud cover so nobody could really see what was happening on the mountain we had we have high mountains okay. you know uh chances speak more mountain and um everyone came out of their houses and was just looking at the mountain with a black cloud that covered it and people thought to themselves what was going on some people thought of scientists were doing something crazy uh people didn't know what was happening in the mountain nobody had a clue uh wow. this never happened you know it was, it was for years and then announcement came on the radio in the afternoon um we have an active volcano and it's it's about to explode it's been exploding so people were more fascinated people were driving to come and see the mountain we had tourists come and see the mountain but we had a dangerous volcano that was brewing under that mountain and then wow. forward uh I think in 97 one of the biggest eruptions ever that took about 13 lives, if I'm not correct, about there, about 13 or 14 lives. I'm not sure with the number, but yeah. um, I was in school that day. That day, uh, we, were, we were in classroom. I sat down at my desk. We were about to do school uh, class, uh, maths, I think it was. And um, the teacher was like, sit down, sit down. But we saw this thing, heard the rumbling of the volcano, heard the yeah. earth, felt the earthquakes. And we looked up and the thing was going about three, three four thousand feet up into the air and towards us. And um people was like sit down, sit down. The kids decide no we're not we're not gonna sit down. We had yeah, a yeah. on six years plan which was the bus was supposed to be there. That day the bus wasn't there which was funny. Wow. Some people start jumping the fence, people start running to the safe zone which was uh, located on the island. It was mm -hmm. chaos that day. Uh, I I'm I mean I know we got yeah. a little time but I'm being real like that that was a very scary um faith trusting moment that shifted a lot of things from my life from my trajectory to where i am but i be i want to say this i always say this you know that day i really felt that my dreams died 
Wow. I didn't know what was going to become of me. I didn't know how if I was going to exist. So really, eh? I didn't feel like nothing else mattered. I didn't know, really, seriously, didn't know what was going to become of me. Uh, wow. And, and I, I don't mean to inter interject here, but this is such a pivotal moment because Gershom, I can just imagine how that must have been. I've never experienced a volcano and not a lot of people has experienced that. And for you to go through it, I'm sure there must be some form of uh, form, some form of emotional uh, connotations. You know, you know when people go to war and they have PTSD. I'm not saying that you've got PTSD right now, but oh. it's such a it's such a traumatic experience. Yes. How are you dealing with it up until today? Are, are you still how are you how are you dealing with that part of your memory? That's a beautiful, beautiful question. I've never, never been asked that, but I deal with it by serving people. I deal with it by giving back. Wow. This, this is where the joy comes. This is where it is like you can wow. always make a comeback. God has an anointing on your life. God has a calling on your life. Yes, sir. Look, I, I am a speaker. I'm a motivational speaker. Yes, sir. Um, This is what I do. I, I love speaking. I'm a second generational speaker. Okay. Uh, my father is a speaker before me. And I, I have to give okay. homage to him. So giving back is what really has healed me from that trauma. And you know, you can never. I can like. I don't have a baby photo. Let's let's put it this way. Hmm. I don't have a baby photo. Okay, um, it's all gone. I don't have no no. What you call those things that like tangibles that you can say? Oh, my baby wear these shoes at this age. I, yeah. I lost everything. We had to get up wow. and run with what we had. Like some people left fires of food cooking. You know what I'm saying? People ran, left the shower on. Um, that's how, that's what, that's, I've never gone this deep with wow. anyone on any interview, but that's real of what it was. No, I appreciate you sharing that with me. It just, it just shows that there's still so much vivid memories that you must still have, uh, based on the past. And it really shapes, it really shapes who you, who you are. And I'm really glad that it shaped you in a way, Gershom, that is beneficial to so many people around the world. When I look at your Facebook or and when I look at your Instagram of of over twenty five thousand followers, it it shows me that there's people that resonates with you, and it's because of that incident that happened. I truly believe that really shaped and gave you that guidance to go into the right direction. So if it wasn't for that volcano, come on, Bishop, preach it, man. Listen, God would take your mess and turn it into a message. Ah, I would yes, take sir. it and put it into purpose. Like, let me tell you, like for real. I'll be honest. As I said, this, I'm second generation speaker. So my father was a, a speaker in the church. He was speaking for years. You know, he, he loved doing this. That, that's what he was born upon. Um, but I, every day now he says, son, you've, you've, you've taken it to the next level. You know, you've taken wow. it to the world. It wasn't just in my small community. Like, you know, being able to give it to the world is, is, is the next thing. And uh, we started by saying legacy. Um, you know, my son, I got a son and a daughter. I don't know which one will pick it up, but this is what this yeah. is what it's about dynasty dynasty um Man. but Man. moving from the volcano crisis i want to say this you know every crisis there's a christ sure C come on don't 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 you dare move on from that you can you say that again bishop come on like every crisis there's a christ i'll be honest and um I, I'm, I'm i'm not i'm not taking nothing away from god the christ the jesus you know he's a phenomenal man I love him. He's, he's he's been my best friend, but you can be the Christ in your crisis. Hmm. Somebody, what do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Because of course, some people will listen to that and say, "Tell me more. Can you go deeper?" Uh, that 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 came to me. That, that just came from my heart. Wow. Uh, so you could either take the, the the crisis that you're going through, and a lot of people are going through a lot of crisis. We've been through a crisis of COVID. And you, a lot of people got disconnected from themselves. And you can either take, find a Christ inside of it, find mm -hmm. a pain inside of it, and use it to be the blessing, to use it to be something that will help somebody else to cross over, to get better, to be amazing, to be phenomenal. And wow. just that that's the Christ in it. So, like, you. you can't separate the Christ from the crisis. Ah. People. You know what? I will never look at crisis the same way again. It, it's such a, 
it's such a good way to keep you driven throughout that crisis period. And I know, of course, it's easier said than done, but we're going to mm. go deeper. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're still on with us right here, I see we've got uh, people on live stream right here. We do want to give you a big thanks and a big shout out for joining. You are in for a treat because I've got some questions for Dr. G. I do see we have Theo Mitchell. He says, wow, your story is powerful. Giving back is how you f deal with your trauma. That's my brother, um, Gershom. And he's sharing with you that your story is powerful. Major respect to you, Theo. Love you, brother. Thank um, you so much, Theo. Yeah, just while I'm just going to do just a, a 10 second announcement, Gershom. If you are, is everything sorted on your end with in terms of sharing this on your page too? Is, is everything cool? I'm, I'm working on it. I don't see you live on Facebook, but I got you on, on, on YouTube, uh, okay. which I'll be sharing it. Gotcha. Wonderful. Just to also let you know that, um, as you can see, scrolling down on the screen right here, I want you to leave your comments below and, uh, any questions you have for myself or Gershom, specifically for Gershom, I want you to pose it there. We will answer it closer to the end of the show. Of course, um, this is a chance where you really can get your questions answered, especially when it comes to how do you get your passion back for 2024? But also, we're going to answer that. And if you have any other questions, feel free to put it in the chat as well. I see we've got Chantal over here on the YouTube side. She says, wow, legacy. And uh, that's all the way there from South Africa, Gershom. So a big salute to you for uh, for joining in from SA, Chantal. So Gershom, you mentioned that your, I couldn't help but but here you mentioned that your dad is so proud of you. Yeah. And you said you were second generation speaker. How does it feel to be able to have that acknowledgement from your dad, letting you know that he's proud and you are just taking that to the next level? What does that do for you, Gershon? I'll be honest with you, and I, I'm so happy that you asked. Um, it's crazy because there were there's many a call few were chosen. There are some of us who are, who are thrust upon to be greatness. Some people uh, choose to be great, and there's some who are it was just thrust upon. Um, you know, my mom always say, "Son, you have an anointing on you." Uh, my mom always say, "You out of the eight children that were born, you have something special. Wow. You are different from the rest." Uh, I never really carried that. I never understood it. Um, I, I didn't I, up till this moment. Even I have to pinch myself to remind myself that you know what the adversities i've had to overcome which i, I really want to put the, the part of disappointment inside of it uh I'm struggling with learning disability dyslexia and dyspraxia back in the 80s the dyslexia and dyspraxia wasn't even a word i was called dunce hard-headed and slow by my teachers wow uh, matter of fact you know i couldn't spell read or write even my own name, which is Jerome, that I didn't use uh, until the age of 25. Oh, I never yeah. spelled it right. Uh, I struggled. So my father, you know, when when I say literally that moment that she said I'm proud of me is mm -hmm. when I remember after speaking to a big audience, uh, it's about 500 people. He came to me, we were speaking together, and he said, son, um, I didn't know. You know, I, I I didn't know you were that bad. I didn't, you know, having, I, I have to say as well, we were a very poor family. Not, you know, okay. I, I slept on the floor, you know, when my brother shared a, 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 a bit of cloth and then we managed to have a mattress. You know, it was just a little sponge thing. Sure. Um, so really humble, poor family that I came from. But, you know, working hard in the fields, um, my, my dad did, uh, mat that he made. So it was very busy life. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not his form. I don't blame my father not knowing. Um, but the moment that he took that moment to say, son, I didn't know that you really struggled that way. And he probably missed it. But to say, I'm proud of you. It was, it changed my life because it really maybe the acknowledgement that I was waiting for. Uh, wow. That, you know, even though I fall short, uh, didn't get no, none of my subjects because I had to leave school. So I never went to get my GCSEs or my O-levels because in Montserrat. So when I came they back to England, where I was going to finish up those stuff, 
they only gave me like four months. So January and May, I had to take my exams. And okay. I, I I got ungraded. <laughs> I got U. I didn't know what U even stand for. Ungraded. Wow. That they said to me, somebody they didn't even look at the paper. They I they didn't even look at my paper. So I'm saying I'm I'm, I'm a college dropout. Uh, I I came from the lowest of the lowest, the bottom of the bottom, adversity of 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 the learning side. So that proud of me came when my father, I actually realized what I was doing. People start ringing him up. People start texting him. People start okay. saying, I see your son, man. He's doing this. He didn't really understand. But I think now he understands what I've done is to touch the world with my story. Ah. Praise, praise God. I mean, you know, it's, it's such a fulfilling feeling. And I can only imagine how you must felt. You know, it's, it's interesting how our parents don't really know the the inner struggles we go through unless we tell them but if we don't tell them they don't know the the real deal and i'm glad your dad got to actually see the real you with all your struggles and all your uh, tribulations and acknowledge that there, there's some there's some healing aspect i'm not sure if you you'd agree with me there's some healing aspect when your parents just look look at you in the eye and say, wow, I didn't know you went through that. And I'm sorry you had to go through that. And just know, son, I'm I'm proud of you. Man. You, you know, the first thing in life to be able to, to move is to acceptance. It's, it's, it's acceptance is one of the things that mm. a lot of people struggle with. Uh, mm. You're an alcoholic. You don't want to accept the fact that you're alcohol. Oh, I'm a social drinker. You you might say whatever it is, but you're alcoholic. Like you can't go to bed at night without drinking. You 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 do drugs. Oh, I only do it on the weekends or whatever it is. I do it when I'm out work. Uh, but you you you're struggling with drug addiction. Like you know, acceptance is one of the big biggest things that a lot of people um struggle with. So and true. Our parents, like they were so careless. They they saw us from birth. I'm blessed to be a parent myself of two beautiful children. Uh, shout out to my wife, uh, which, you know, I know you got more to ask, but I, I'm really not jumping a gun or anything. But I want to say, like, parents that actually be in their children's life, they know the, the, the growth. They know them from zero. They, hmm. they know them from the womb. So they kind of have an advantage to say what they should have done or should or they could have done. And, uh, you know, we are human, you know, we have to really leave that grace for that, for that space of not done enough. But, you know, mm. when, the fact that my father did that, that was grown of him. That was mad of him. Yeah. I, I, I say it to this day now, he's my best friend, man. Like, wow. He's my mentor. He's my confidant. He's my ride or die. He's, he's my number one cheerleader. Come on. He's my sister, you know, um, which We'll bring you to the adversity that I just conquered, which I know you probably want to talk about later on. No, 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 for sure. And I just want to thank you for sharing that. And if your dad is listening right now, I'm sure you are so proud of just hearing everything he shared with you. You is friend, you is best friend, you is brother. He, you, you are the world to him. And for all those that uh, that perhaps don't have that relationship with your dad, I, I want to encourage you. It's maybe hard to make that first step, yep. but life is short. Make that first step, reach out. And if the door closes, it's okay. You can rest good at night knowing that you've made you've made the, the first step. So major salute for that encouragement, Gershom. I appreciate that. No, absolutely. If you are on right now, I want to thank you for being here with us. Uh, we do have, as we can see, Dr. G, the love motivator on the show. And of course, if you have any questions, I'll feel free to leave the questions in the comments below and we will get to it. I see we have Johnny Wayne. We still have Theo on the line. Awesome stuff. We've got Dwayne. We've got uh, Etienne. We also have a few comments here from uh, Chantal says that this reminds me of me and my mom when I had to educate her on what depression was and that's mm. when i realized the generational gap so yep. true yep. so true it's interesting because i i do and we're not going to spend too long on this there definitely has been a case of where our 
uh, our parents don't have the technology that we have now and the resources and they did the best with what they had so we salute all those from the previous generations we thank you for doing what you've done all you could do is what you had at that moment so a big salute to you but back to you uh, Dr. G. Dr. G. Now, this question is a selfish question, and I'd really love you to answer this one with all your might and all your heart. My brother says, thanks, Dr. G, for acknowledging his comment there about how uh, giving back is how you deal with your trauma. So uh, he says thanks to you there, uh, uh, Dr. G. I appreciate that. No, wonderful. So, Gershom, there's there's people on the live watching right now, and we are moving into the new year. There's a, there's a level of anxiety, there's a level of trepidation, there's a level of, I don't have my things in order in order to start this year successfully. Can you share with us a time, Gershom, where you, where you was experiencing the same level of anxiety of how am I going to go into the situation? You are so scared, you're feeling so fearful. Can you share with us a time and, and how you've overcome and you know what you've done to really get through that stage of your life, man. Anxiety. Now I, I want somebody to type or to say this and write this down somewhere. Mm. This too shall pass. Come on. I want. I want you to write that down somewhere you can see it every single day of your life. Yes, sir. This too shall pass. Oh, okay. Let me let me help y'all. I will pass through it. Uh huh. Let, let me help you out. Like, like, let me get you to a point that you have to move with that mindset that tells you it will pass. Mm -hmm. And when you understand it did not come to stay, it did not come. Oh to no! Stay, it came to pass. So, so that's 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 one of the biggest biggest things. So we can get frustrated. Frustration is good. <laughs> Who told you frustration? <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. That frustration is not good. Get frustrated. Angry. Get angry. Like you said to me, wow. who did you get angry with? Get angry with the fact that you're not doing enough. You're not working hard enough. Mm. You're not sacrificing enough. You're not pushing enough. Oh, did I get to the word? You know, the word that saved my life after depression. This is where the aha moment where I took on my crown. Talk Every to us, Doc. Crown. This is it. Depression, broken heart. That's where it started for me. I've been running away from my from my from my calling for too long. In mm. my bedroom, gave my life to this woman six years. Six years of my life. Um, engaged to be married, bought the wedding ring, went down on my one knee and said, Will you be my wife? She said, Yes. I was the happiest man on the moon. I was planning, getting my friends, telling them I had a big, massive engagement party. Whoa. Man, I was excited. I had over 300 people at this party. He wasn't even wedding yet. I was the man that this is it. I found the one woman that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And then a couple of months later, on my birthday, the 17th of May, she told me she wanted to be as free as a bird. I did not understand. I was lost. I was confused. I was broken. I was depressed. I didn't know how I was going to get through. As a matter of fact, it took me a year and six months to figure this out. Sure. I didn't understand it. I kept running back, trying to chase after it, uh, trying to fix it. Couldn't fix it. Couldn't get it right. And then as I wrote, drive up the motorway one day, driving to her destination, the voice came to me, where are you going? I pulled over on the highway. Right there in that moment, he said, where are you going? This is the last time you're going to take this journey. I said, what do you mean? Pulled over. Milton Keynes is where I met, you know, if you know, if you're going to Birmingham, where she was. And I was like, I'm in London. And pulled over, the voice said to me, this is the last time. Mm -hmm. so what do you mean the last time? I, I, told, I, I was like, no, this is it. You're going to start figuring out what true love is all about. So that's why wow. I go by love, the love motivator. That's how I got my name. Okay. I started okay. to figure out what love is. I started to explore what love is. Started mm -hmm. to go deeper than just the partial love where somebody say they love you, but they don't mean it. Understand that God loves you first. And you got to serve yourself first. Mm. You got to love yourself first. You got to love God first. You got to put that between you, the relationship with you and God, knowing that once you do that, mm -hmm. then what happens is you start seeing the evidence of what true love is all about. And wow. that's where 
everything started to change for me. That's where I started to to win because I started to love me. I started to value me. Wow. I started to serve me. I started to say there's nobody else better than me. And wow. then when said to me, son, I don't just want you to be the best. I want you to be the greatest. He said, what, God? Yes, that's right. You're going to take longer to blow up, but Phew. guess what? I am going to pressure you. I'm going to crush you. I am going to crush you so much that the wine that comes out of you is going to be so much more finer. It's going to be so much more refined that you're going to have to go through the process and you're going to have to trust it. You're going to have to shake on it. Come on. Come on. Do. When you stand on any stage, they're going to ask you, how did you do it? And this is how I did it. I did it because I start by loving God. I start by putting God first. Hmm. I start by loving myself. Start loving myself first. Understanding I had to serve from a cup, a cup that's full. And when I start doing that, that's how I get excited. I get excited because love is the key. I love it. Love is the key to life, bro. That's my that's the secret sauce of anything. When you love what you do and do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. But most of all, you'll be living your best life every single day. So that's my secret sauce right there. I ah. you the principle of love. Love is the key. Is the love that saved me. That even in that depression on that bed, yes, when I was sir. thinking about suicidal thoughts, when I got the razor in my hand, and I, I sorry guys if I'm triggering you guys. I'm right here. I'm here to serve you. If I trigger you, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I had the razor on one side, and I was sitting, thinking about sitting my risk. I was thinking about going and executing this world. I was thinking about the pills that I had overdose. I was thinking just I didn't want to be here no more. And I heard the voice of God say, push. Sure. I heard God say, push, son. Wow. I said, God, what do you mean, push? Uh, Les Brown say, if you could look up, you can get up. I wasn't looking up, sir. I was mm. crying myself in my bed, looking down. Wow. In the pillow. I was broken. I was lost. I was confused. Mm. I did not want to be here no more. The enemy was about to take me out. Wow. And guess what? I managed to push myself to the floor, roll out of bed, literally roll out of bed. And I started to do some push-ups. One push-up. Wow. Here we go. Here we go. Two push-up. Three push-up. Four push-up. Keep pushing, Gershom. Push harder. Come on, keep pushing. Sure. And I got to 50. I was sweating by 50. Wow. It felt good. It felt good. Push past your pain, Gershom. Keep pushing. Wow. Push past your pain, Gershom. Push. Wow. What happens? So everybody that know how you get through adversity, you push past your pain until greatness is next. That's exactly how I did it. That's my slogan. That's been my mantra for 13 years. I pushed my way to this. I cried my way through this. I yes, prayed man. my way to this. Mm -hmm. I prayed until something happens. I know ah. you missed it. Push. Push, baby, push. Listen, you deserve a glass of water right there. Listen, Gershon, that was that was so powerful. There's so much to unpack over there. If you're watching right now and you're getting some value out of this, I'd encourage you to let us know in the comments that you are getting value out of this. And if you have any questions for Gershom, feel free to put it in the comments. We'll touch on it a little bit later on in the show. Gershom, that was quite the story. Like, where do I start? From the 17th of May. You started on the 17th of May when she gave you that ultimatum, when she said, I'm done on the 17th of May. And then you had the epiphany where God says, this is the path when you were driving. This is the path where uh, you, you're taking it no longer. You're taking this path. And then you found yourself, you know, again in a situation where you're wanting to take your life with a razor on the side. And then you managed to miraculously find your way on the ground having the voice of the lord says push push i want to encourage someone on the screen right now if you are hearing my voice listen this is a message straight to you saying push i don't know if this is going to if this is helping anyone but if this is helping you i want you to write in the comments push baby push we are all in labor right now gershom just pushing the gift out of our wombs come on can i get a witness in here now you man oh man i see theo <laughs> says push but you just you just went right to it we're in labor we gotta push but you missed you missed it you gotta pray until something happens you gotta push you gotta pray until 
something happens. You got to push. Do the yes, work. Sir. Pray until something happens. You know push. what? That just flew over my head right there. So let's take it word by word. <laughs> push is for P. U is for until. Come on. Share, share the rest with us. Push is for pray. P uh -huh. is pray. Until is you. Something is yes, added. Sir. Happens. Ah, but, so you know what's so crazy? You mm -hmm. might have to cry until something happens. You might have to work until something happens. You might have to faith until something happens. You come on, some <laughs> I'm done. I'm done this episode, okay? <laughs> so so let me let me just say, let me just say that's been my mantra, man. I ain't got yeah. the t-shirt on today, but you can see my t-shirt everywhere. People have been buying my merchandise. It's it's something Wonderful. to live by. Like my community, like I, it's been saving people's lives. Shout out to yeah. a young lady in Arizona right now. She be wearing. She's going through a very health. Some, but she said my my slogan has really taken her to the next level. Wow. Like let me say this to you. God gave me that slogan. Push past your pain. Greatness is next. So you gotta pray. You gotta. There's something great coming out of your pain. There's something great that is inside of the pushing. And you just went into the whole metamorphosis. You went, you went, you wanted to break it down deeper to the whole catalyst, to the to the whole converter, you to the to the to the crushing system my where oh you my. wanted to give birth to something new. Do you know when God is about to give you something new, He needs you to push, but there's time that He tells you wait. Come on, it's time that He tell you 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 don't want to break. You want to do this in time. You don't want to do this. You don't want this out of time. You want to be on time. You got to make sure that, that that if everybody has been in the in the labor room, you see when this midwife tells the the, the mom, the, tell the female, she said, "Just wait, okay? It will, okay. You're not diluted yet. You said, just wait, just wait. We just, yes, I want to yes. tell you, hold, push. Come on. There is somebody that's hearing this, and I need. That's how I made it through my adversity. That's how I made it through my anxiety. That's how I made it through my fears. That's how I made it through, because God told me to push, son." Just remember wow. that whatever you're doing this season, pray until something happens. But I'm here for you. Wow. Gershom, this is so encouraging for me. It's encouraging because of the fact that I'm going through a journey right now where it seems like it's a big mountain to climb. <laughs> We're trying to build a massive movement with this dr Driven Daily brand. And it seems like a massive mountain. And I'm encouraged hearing you say push mm. because I'm going to pray until something happens. Now, talking about that, I see Theo on the line. He's saying uh, that one word changes my thinking. Push. It's a it's a it's a mind changer right there. I'm gonna remember I, push. I, I, until... with you. I want to say this. Sorry not to cut you, bro. Um, Continue. Uh, there's a time pointed unto man. I'm gonna name drop Tony Robbins. I'm gonna name drop Zig Ziglar, Jim Ron. Brian Tracy, you name any of these guys, cats in the game. Mm -hmm. It took them 40 years. It took them a time and a season. I've been in this business and I couldn't spell, couldn't read, couldn't write. But I'm going to mm -hmm. blow your mind away because somehow God has appointed that I've got all five books. Ah, in praise the Lord right there. This is what the Lord can do. Like... I know people probably may watch it by audio, but these are my five books in my hands. Mm. I couldn't spell, read, or write, or type. And it's wow. crazy because uh, I just got a new package of my new book, uh, new books that people have been ordering that they want their signed copy. So I've got to sign mm. them and get them out to them. And I'm just grateful, guys. I, I, I want to take you through each one. Just I'm going to be as quick as possible. Sure. Very, very quick. Bless so us. Yeah. This book right here. My mom says my mom, my mom still believes it's the best book I ever written. Okay. But uh, I, it was called, it was called the Perfect Love Triangle, which I'm gonna take you to the inside. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Perfect Love yes. Triangle. But I, God told me, son, change it because some situation. Love me, love you, love we. That's the title of this one. That's my okay. very first book. Interesting. That taught me to 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 type, to write, to 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 do all the things I'm doing now. This book right here. And after okay. that, like God was saying, son, you need to give somebody something that they need to 
overcome, to, to triumph. They had to do this. So I wrote this book called Victory. Ah. So if, the point you are, if you're struggling, if you're struggling, like whatever issue you're struggling with, victory will help you. It's a personal development book. You can write in it. You can work through it. It's a, you know, fear okay. not. Trust the process. That's chapter two. I just opened it up. Phenomenal book. It's yeah. been helping people. Wow. Then God said, son, you got to tell somebody your story. And he okay. said, what are you going to tell them your story? Because I, and I was laying there. I was like, God, I don't know. I thought I was done with that. He said, no, I'm not done. You need to write a book. But this is just, this is just a piece of what you're going to tell them with. And I want you to know that you are a masterpiece. And that's, mm. that's, my, that's, my, that's my book. It's called Masterpiece. So become the master of your success. That's exactly what I wrote in 2012 to help people to know my story. Wow. And it's available. But then it's still not glow. I, There's I, I, I more. There's so more. Bad. It's crazy because you said you met me eight years ago. In 2010, this young lady, shout out to Natasha. I love you. An angel, phenomenal woman. I was in Canada, Quebec. You didn't know that, right? Okay. I'm going to shock you. No, I didn't I'm know that. Canada, all right. That's right. I was in Quebec, Canada with this young lady. And this is how the speaking got to a different lover. Shout out to my boy, Eric Thomas, E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. What happened was, she said to me, I watch you. She went onto her laptop. Check it out, guys. I watch you for personal development in my relationships, in my life, in everything. Like, I watch you. And okay. she showed me six videos, six of my videos that she had. And she said, wow. these are my favorite of all your 632, wow. 23 videos. She said on YouTube. But there's this dude called E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher. Uh -huh. this, is what, this is what happened. I didn't know about E.T. She introduced okay. me to E.T. She said to me, son, really? she up the, and she pulled up E.T.'s video. She was lying in the room and I was there. She goes, I said, who's this dude? He said, this dude is a motivational speaker. Yeah. And he, I watch all his videos for studying. I was like, for real? Cool. Say so he had about 30, like maybe 30 videos. I was like, oh, you only got six of mine, but you got like, anyway, that's another uh Oh, video. uh oh. <laughs> oh come but on, we forgive guys. her. We forgive her. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's good. She's good. <laughs> but uh, all you need is one word, right, for me, and yeah. your life is changed. That, so somebody say, push, you got that. Go be changed. You're going to be amazing. So it's phenomenal. So in that moment, what happened was she came in the next couple of days, said, you know what? I see you on ET speaking at event, helping people all around the world. This was 13 years ago. Wow. Gershom, 12 years ago. Gershom, 12 I, I don't mean to stop you there, but I just want to give some background to the audience. So Eric Thomas is currently the number one motivational speaker in the world. So can you imagine now he's going to share with us what happened? Continue there. Continue. It's cool, man. At, the, at that time, he wasn't the number one. Let's just okay. say that. Yeah, at that yeah. time, yeah. you got to put that in. That's very important. He was, a sure. regular boy. he was a regular man like me and you. He was okay. crazy. So th this is what happened now. She came to me and she said, I see you guys traveling the world, speaking and empowering people together. Guess what happened? What? I believed it. Okay. I believed it. This is a guy that couldn't spell, read, or write at that time, but I believed it. Ten years later, I stood on the same stage with Dr. Eric Thomas. That's me on the stage right there. That's me. And I said, I said, Wow. Uh, in 2009, that conversation happened. In 2019, I stood on the same stage with Dr. Eric Thomas, live in London, and opened up for him before he spoke. Let me say this. I made a promise that I will write a book to tell people exactly how I how I did it. And in this book, if you want to be, if you're a speaker, if you have a gift, yes, this book have principles that I would apply to your life. That whatever it is that you want to become, this is how I did it. I stood on the same stage in 2019 and wow. been able to, you know, be on the stage with him. So the last one, which okay. is my baby, mm -hmm. my last one, I, 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 I took too long. I apologize. No, this, this is your time. This is your time, uh, Gershom. This, this book right here. Guys, adversity. You ask me, how do you get through adversity? How do you get through anxiety? 2020, April 14th. 
my sister passed away. Wow. She was my, I said, my father's my number one cheerleader. Well, now he is. But my sister was my number one cheerleader. Mm. 42 years of age. Haven't seen her for 10 years. But she was calling me every single day and say, I see you. Wow. You're growing. After every, every radio interview, after every video, she would send me, hey, you could have said it this way better. She uh -huh. was my number one cheerleader. She believed in me before I believed in myself. And um, I'm getting a little bit emotional. Um, I remember God saying to me, like, the beginning of this year, son, I got you to write this book. You got to write this book. I said, God, I'm done with that. I done write four books. Like, who other motivational speaker have done that? Like, you you tell me one that has done so many in the yeah. less time that I've done it. Yeah. I say, no, son, it's not about you. This is about the people. Mm. And I want you to make it global. I want you to put it on everywhere that they can access it. I said, God, how am I going to do that? And I was like, okay. I was in the car. I just got off a call with a gentleman that he was telling me about. He wants to write a book. We were talking about it. And I was like, God said, you see that? Wow. And then I got off the phone. I got upstairs, oh, wow. pull out my laptop, and it came up with BU, love you. Now, this book told me, I'm telling you, in COVID, a lot of people died, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people lost themselves, right? Yeah. Sudden death is one of the hardest things to deal with. Yeah. And a lot of people were de have dealt with, like I have done, dealt with sudden death, unplanned death. People that don't have cancer that you didn't know about. But COVID just came on white through people that was dropped out. You know, yeah. you're still here, so you made it through, right? Yeah. And this book is dedicated to my sister because wow. Um I mean not not this I mean correction. This one is dedicated to my the other one is dedicated to my sister this one but okay. this one was written in her memory because I know what it is to go through that adversity of grief. And wow. there's a lot of people who are struggling with grief right now and turn into alcohol, turn into yeah. drugs. Um, turn into sex, turn into whatever, but to try to make it through. But the key to this book is when you understand who you are, when you know that you owe yourself to be that phenomenal human being. Come on, Doc. Come on. When you understand how important you are, then yes. all you got to do is to be you and love you. Everybody else is taken. Just, just love yourself unconditionally. Because be yourself and use the power that is within you because the right people will love you. And that's wow. that, that this book was, was but, and I want to tell you the power of this book. I started this book and I couldn't put it down and I completed this book in nine days. What? What a record time to complete it. What was the process like? Was it was it sleepless nights? Was it just take us through that process? Well, I didn't sleep for five days. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what happened, like for real. So, uh. for those of you who don't know, I I still I got a nine to five that I hold down, and uh, I yeah. work with people with uh, mental illnesses, okay. and on a daily basis. But mm -hmm. I did a forty hour week in a seventy hour week that week. That's what I did. Wow. And I still completed the book all night straight to work. Got back on the book. Oh, I couldn't man. put it down. And I'm telling you, like, let me just quickly read something from. Uh, Please do. Uh, this is this is the affirmation that God gave me. I put. I just opened the book. I didn't even look for it. It's okay, crazy. Okay. And he said, "Today I will check. I will challenge myself every day to be a better than I was yesterday. I will push past my pain to get to my greatness." I will have the ability to overcome my life challenges that will come my way. My life is full of abundance and joy and full of grace. I will become successful at anything I, that I do. I will. I have mm. the strength to rise up from any pain and hurt. I will look. I will work hard to be the smart, to be smart at the same time for what I want. I will rise to the challenge to be the greater than I was a, a second ago. Not a day ago, a second ago. Mm -hmm. I am one of a kind. 
and no one is like me. I must live like I am. I am blessed and highly favored. I am unbreakable. What belongs to me will find me. I will speak life, greatness. Come on. That, that is in me. That's just an affirmation. And it's crazy. I just wonderful. I wonderful. Just, I just that that's it. So it's got affirmations, it's got principles, it got stuff that will change you, man. I don't know what you think about that, but I, I like I, I, there was there was two parts of that affirmation I liked. I like the part that said, I will work hard. And then you went on to be smart, et cetera. But I like the piece of where I will work hard. Because many times when we think of affirmations, we think of just thinking about it and wishing it comes true. But your affirmation says, I will work hard. What affirmation says, and I will work hard? Same time for what I want. Yeah. And, and, I, and I like the other piece too, where you said, I am blessed. And for those that are watching that sometimes feel like nothing can go right in life. You know, they will never amount to anything. I'm always cursed. I'm always, always something always goes wrong. That, that piece of the affirmation that says I am blessed is such a total mental transformation to say I'm not a victim, but I'm a victor. Come on, Bishop. You, you are got preaching it. right got there. It. That's right. So I am blessed and highly Highly favored. Highly my, favored. My, my auntie, I'll tell you something. Well, that, 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 my 94 year old auntie, she mm. is like a goddess to me. She is a phenomenal woman. I remember growing up in, in the islands and we were, we were hungry. <laughs> Didn't have nothing to eat. And I had a donkey. But sometimes I, I had to walk. Mm. And it would be a Saturday night, Sunday morning. Because we had to get ready for school the next week. I know my mom didn't have nothing to give, send us with to school for to eat. Sure. And um, my mom would say, well, my mom would say, son, mm. I need you to go. And I had to walk like eight, seven miles far. Sure. From the, from the village of Windy Hill to the village of Harris's through hills and valleys. And I would see my auntie on the step, well, my uncle was sitting on the stairs sometimes, and sometimes my auntie would sit out, and there's some stairs that you have to, about like a hundred steps, and the house would be up there. You could see sure. them looking down, waiting for me to come. And um, she would say, I am blessed and highly favored. Uh -huh. And um, it's something that she kept throughout her whole life. Um, she lives in London now. Uh, she's 94 years old. But she said, I am blessed and highly favored. Something that she says all the time, and it's something wow. I say to now. I speak mm -hmm. over my life. I am blessed and highly favored. So you have to just believe it. You have to speak it and, and really understand that you're changing something in the atmosphere. You're changing mm -hmm. your trajectory. You are shifting your negative thought. Um, the enemy wants to take over your life, but you got to give him the gap. If you give him the gap, he will take all of it. So, wow. you know, be that blessed part, I had to put that in like, you know, it actually gave me goosebumps because that was one of the reasons why I put it in. Her name is Anani, and I love her, man. Oh, man. Thanks so much for sharing that story. Your your grandma, is she still alive right now? 94? Oh, yeah. No, my, my no, that's my auntie. No, your auntie. Yeah. It, so, is your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's still alive right now, yeah. Wow. How how's she doing right now? Is Does she have all her mental faculties, or is she kind oh, yeah. of... Oh, yeah. Her mental that's faculties amazing. are amazing. Um, uh, hopefully I'll post a picture. I always post pictures with her on her birthday. We go and see her Christmas time. She's, you know, I, I check in on her from time to time, but, uh, she's a very big inspiration to my life. Um, it's funny that you mentioned my grandma. My grandma's 89. Okay. Uh, she was sick the other day, but, um, she's a lot better now. That's but, great. um, I, I just want to say like, these are the, these are the people that are calling to yeah. me, to, to the, to the love more they're, they're my, they're my rock. They're my solid. And yeah. in my books, in my speech, people did my why, why I speak. I don't speak just because I want to be seen. I don't just speak because I want to be heard. Mm -hmm. I don't speak because I want money. I speak because I want to see people's lives change. I mean, there's no, there's nothing better for me, more joy than somebody says, it's because of you I changed my life. It's because of your words, wow. because of what you said, because of you showing up in your pain. And I, I go through adversity, you mm -hmm. know, um, 
I go to, tri to, to trials, to tribulation, and I, I'm really transparent on my social media because every person goes through is issues. You know, I'm not perfect. And yeah. what, one of the things I say to people is don't stop. Just keep moving forward. Do not quit. You got what it takes to, to, to rise above that adversity and to make something better of yourself, man. So I, I'm just grateful that wow. for what I've achieved so far, and I still got a lot of money to go. Oh man, I'm just excited. So much, I can still feel the passion, Gershom, out of from where we started, as we discussed in the Isle Emerald Isles of Montserrat, all the way until till today. I still sense that passion, and some of us we have lost that passion, and mm. yet you still hold such a fire inside of you, mm. and. I think one of the one of the keys that I take away from you just just seeing you on screen is that we really need to utilize our past traumas to fuel our present. We cannot let our past traumas debilitate us from succeeding in our present and future. So a big thank you to you, Gershom, for just reminding us all that we can use our past trauma to fuel and energize us in our present. So major salute to you brother i appreciate it. i got a nugget i want to tell you guys that don't yes, burn sir. the bridge man mm. don't burn the bridge uh oh don't don't burn the bridge you're making a mistake don't burn the bridge because go you deeper never, bishop hmm. when you burn the when you burn the bridge you can't go back to see what you left behind and really when you go back and you see what you left behind it keeps it keeps your fire in you to keep going true you know every now and then i go back and i think about how far i've come and I know I can't quit. I got to keep going. Um, I, 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 I'm gone in more than 10,000 hours. I'm probably in 20,000 hours. Um, you yeah. get lost in my work on YouTube. You get lost in my work on Facebook. Wow. You get lost in my work in, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on mm. YouTube. Um, my books. Like, I coach one-to-one -one coaching. And I, I I really don't talk about my success rate. But I'm 100% success rate. That's, mm. And that's... That's the truth, I'm not lying. Like that's, I have nobody that come back and say I want my money back, or they never said, wow. oh, so, nobody has ever come back and say, uh, Gershom, you you did me wrong, or you point me in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever come back and say, um, anything negative about my coaching. I got a hundred percent success rate, and I say this because you say, okay, where I am and what I'm doing. I'm doing what God asked me to do. Mm. And once you're doing what God asked you to do, you can never fail. You can never fail, eh? What an encouragement. I see those online. I just want to read some of the comments here, Gershom. Uh, we have Kenneth R. Mitchell online, and he says, and that's my dad, by the way, he says, I really appreciate value, and I'm speechless and humbled by the testimony of Dr. Gershom. Convey my blessings to him, dad. So he's uh, he sends his regards there and, and well wishes to you. Now, thank you so much, man. I'm coming to South Africa. Let me ah, that. listen, listen. We're gonna keep you. We're gonna keep. We're gonna hold you to that. And um, we also have Christy on the line. And Theo says, uh, Theo Statsman Mitchell says, you ministered to me profoundly today. Thank you, Doc. We'll get your books, man. So true, and and I test him to that too. Uh, so Theo sends a big shout out to you, Gershom. So, I mean, help me to become the New York Times bestseller by going to Barnes & Noble and getting this book right here. New York Times. I'm in the race, guys. Let me tell you. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I believe God for it. So, go get the book. It's on Amazon, and it's on Barnes & Noble. So, Wonderful. I think Amazon got a sale right now, but Barnes & Noble definitely. We gave from Barnes & Noble. I need to sell 10,000 copies. If I do so, I will make the New York Times bestseller list. But, you know, it's up to you guys, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. No, absolutely. we got around uh, 10 more minutes left, if not sooner, but we can aim towards 10 more minutes, Gershom. I've got one or two more questions to ask you. Um, now, I know that you mentioned you you know, you know, were crossing paths with your Steve Harveys and your Eric Thomases. For us, that just wants to get a get a taste of what it was like. What was your experience with, uh, with Steve Harvey and Eric Thomas? Okay, you know, Steve Harvey, for me, the first experience was a sign from God. Hmm. So 
you know, meeting him, very humble dude in the Atlanta airport. Uh, that encounter was phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. Then, you know, fast forward seven years or so six years later, I won two VIP tickets, which I was working on to, to meet him in Atlanta. And really, to be honest, my prayer was just to tell him thank you. I didn't think no bigger than that. Because see, see, I've been on the path since then, and all the stuff I've phenomenally written books. Then then I was, you know, in, in Munster, where I'm from, going home, speaking in the schools, you know, being welcome as a mo the only motiva international motivational speaker. Wow. From the, you know, from my Man. small community, to, yeah. I've already made it. You know, yeah. From that perspective, um, then, uh, but now I'm on a global stage. It's not just Munster, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I, I'm known in London. I'm known in New York. Oh. Uh, known in Arizona. I'm known throughout the world now. So it's, it's a all big stage, eh? That's right. So yeah. when I met Steve Harvey on the second time around, that was a confirmation where I know God uh, uh, has really put me on this path. Mm. That, that event, I was sitting in the front row waiting for him to come in to speak. And I remember saying, this is not like, this is not it, God. I, I have to meet him personally. You know, I don't know how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And crazily, my wife was next to me because I got the opportunity to take my wife with me. Okay. And, uh, you know, we had, a, it was an amazing time. Sit down with him, dinners, everything. It, it was nice. And um, that moment, as it was sitting down, I was like, I heard the voice say, get up. I was like, get up. Uh -huh. I got up. I was like, where are you going? Like, he's going he's gonna to come. So it's not supposed to be like this. I'm supposed to meet him to tell him, tell him thank you. So I got up and I uh, walked out the, this auditorium with six, 700 people and um, at the at Like Success Conference. Now, and when I went there, I stood outside. I was looking up at the sky. But somehow I put my phone on the wall to take some pictures of me. You know, you can do boost on automatic. Okay. And then when I did that, a Rolls Royce pulled up. And guess who was coming out the car? Who? Steve Harvey. And that Ooh. was the moment he was putting on his jacket and his glasses on. Uh -huh. And I was pointing at him and he was pointing at me. And I'm pointing at him. <laughs> he was pointing okay. at me. He's going into the building. And then I was just watching him go. And then I heard his voice say, stop. Okay. Stop everybody. He said, come here, kid. So, so so that moment, that moment there, Gershom, what was that moment like when he said, come? What ran through your mind at that moment? Because you, we would have never thought uh, someone like, like, like Steve Harvey would actually call you. We always going, trying to go to him, but he's calling you now. Yeah, that was a crazy moment. To be honest, I, I didn't even hear his voice, but I heard God's voice. That's gonna be real. I don't. It's like this is it. This is it. This is it, Gershom. Yeah. Okay. And I just walked up to him. He had security around. He had people around him. They're like, "What is Steve doing?" Because huh. he's he's running to go, but he stopped everyone. Ay, ay, and, ay. Um, he, I just hugged him, and he hugged me. Oh man! It was a very emotional moment. I started to cry, wow. and I just say, "Thank you, thank you so much." And he said, "Do you remember me?" He said, I got you, kid. I got you, son. I said, what do you mean? Do you remember me? And he's like, I see you, man. And oh, then um, yeah. then let's take, and then he was walk. I was walking away. He's walking away. And then he goes, oh, come on. Let's give this, let's give this man some pictures. So. Wow. Something for you that you can see something real quick. Yes, sir. Wow. Can you believe it, man? Um... So. Sorry guys, I'm 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 a very factual kind of person, so I love evidence. Yes, sir. evidence speak. So this picture right here, I know you can't see it, but um we can see it. We can kids. see it. So this one right here is the first time. That's the first time, and then okay, that's the second time, you know. Okay. So so um for me, I'll tell you this: it's not about the man. Wow, it, it's not about that he's Steve Harvey or whatever it is, it's for sure. Is what God did. Um, yeah. God confirmed what I said I was going to do. And I'm just grateful that I was able to follow through and execute everything that I said I was going to do. And um, 
you know, I still believe that <laughs> I never tell nobody the details of the conversation at the airport, which is very significant. Because okay. if you go back, go back and do your research and check out his timeline and do my timeline and have a look at something. Wow, uh, I think I think we 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 need a part two of this, whether it's sometime sooner or in the future, and I will have to do my research and I'll come back to you as to what I've discovered. But if I right. can't find anything, you just have to give it up, eh? That's right. But you'll find it if you if you look. It's not hard to see. So if you look at the timeline, Atlanta Airport, he was going through his second divorce. But that's all I'm gonna say. But go and have a look. And um that moment from there to now, his success, you'll see the difference and you'll see. I believe that conversation shifted both of us that mm -hmm. we had in the airport. And um, it's still yet to be told. I believe one day he will speak on it, that conversation. I believe so. So you've heard it first from me that I say one day before he passed away, before I leave this earth, yeah. we will come together and he will speak about that conversation because that conversation changed my life. And I, this is the words I will tell you after, mm -hmm. after we left each other's company yeah he said these words he's about seven foot two he put i'm a very short dude five three he put his hand up on my shoulder yeah and said, son there's something amazing about you kid i don't know what it is but there's something wow so you tell me what he thought or what happened that made him say these words and that's all i'm going to say to you sure but you eric thomas eric thomas um Let's say it like this. You know, when you have an anointing, you have a blessing or call it, and you're walking in it. Um, like for me, when I speak, I know that the Gandhi in me is the same spirit. Okay. When Mother, 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 Teresa, Mother Teresa Malcolm X, it's a spirit that makes us, that, you know, a voice that helps us to help people. So when I met him, I really understood that it's the spirit more than the image, more than who you are. Is, is what we have inside of us that allows us to be the people that we are. And um, as I said, many are called, but few are chosen. And I think uh, Dr. Eric Thomas, Lace Ackley, I'll give him that, um, has done great things in the world to help many people. And um, for me, I don't, I don't see that um, he's better than me. I don't see that he's smarter than me. Oh, no. I just see that God has chosen his path to where he is. And my path is yet to be to be trodden. So I'm just going to continue the journey. Wow. What, what an experience, eh, Gershom? From meeting Steve Harvey to not just once, but twice, and having a powerful, very secretive conversation in an airport that we will discover in due time before the two of you pass away. We have to broadcast that. And then moving over to, to Eric Thomas, which I'm sure you've, you've gotten uh, lots of inspiration from, and I'm sure vice versa. I'm sure he's checked you out too and vice versa. Gershom, we're coming closer to the end right now. And firstly, I just want to take this time out to give you your flowers where flowers are due. You've been through, through so much where many people would have given up. Many people would have thrown in the towel, but you've used your pain for your prosperity and you from the prison to the palace mm. you mm. you are really a living example gershom that it is possible to turn your life around and i don't know who has given you the strength ah uh, we know who who <laughs> has however gershom from my heart to yours i want to thank you i want to salute you and i want you to know that you there there's still so much more in store. I can see it. I'm looking at you right now, and I can see it with my two eyes. There's, there's something burning in the bottom there, Gershom, that I'm excited to see, and I'm excited to be part of that journey. Speaking about that, I know that you mentioned um, on our conversation earlier on about, you know, one day us doing something together here in Canada, whether it's a speaking conference where the two of us speak or we have other guest speakers as well, but something where we do something on the same stage. And I couldn't agree more. As the months progress, Gershom, I believe God is going to make things happen. So I'm not I'm not sure if you feel that in your spirit or if you second Please. me on that one, but think things are gonna happen. Oh man, I'm excited. Like let everybody that's watching this, um, I'm on a, I'm on a clock, right? 
And I want you guys to know this. I am on a clock. Like, before my 42nd birthday, I have to touch certain continents in the world. Yes, God sir. has always told me that. I got to do it. So I'm telling you I'm coming to Canada. Come you know, on. I'm saying that you guys get your money for your tickets. It's going to be a phenomenal event. It's yes. going to be a personal development event. It's going to be a powerful, impactful event that's going to shift you. It's going to move you. It's oh, going to yeah. transform you. Come on. Most of all, it's going to invoke your passion in you to go after your dreams, to do whatever it is that is laid in you, mm. and then you will never be the same again. So, oh, my no. brother, I, I'm, I'm, Rundel, I'm telling you, uh, it's quite simple. A venue, a date, tickets, I'm there. Come on. Three things. Venue, date, and ticket. Man, oh, we man. Gotta, we we got to tell the time, though. They got to They got to... <laughs> We got to let the time at six o'clock, whatever time I'll be. Once I'm there, guys, like for real, like, let me say this and I'll be honest with you. There's one thing to watch this live video and be blessed because I know you all are blessed. Mm. Uh, I know your life will never be the same after you're watching this. Mm. But there's another thing being in the room. So true. You know, he said, go and wait for me. You tell him, go and wait for me in a room. Mm -hmm. There's something that happens when you get inside of a room with like-minded entrepreneurs, business owners, ambitious people that people that want to live their best life and do phenomenal in their business to do become successful, to push past their pain. There is something yes. amazing that happens when you're in the room, connecting, networking. You got to be in the room. Mm -hmm. When I got into the room with Dr. Eric Thomas, come on. I cannot tell you the amount of connections that came out of it. I cannot tell you the amount of uh of opportunities I was but so I'm telling you when when we get when we book the venue, when we book the date, when we set the time, when we uh get the tickets, when we promote it, we tell people this is what's going to happen. I guarantee you people's lives will never be the same once they get in the room absolutely and i can't wait for i can't wait for that i'm glad you are excited as much as i am for for something like this and you know sometimes people talk a big talk where they say we've got to do this we've got to do this no, but no. i've made it a, a, a point gershom that whatever i say i need to be a hundred percent convicted with what i'm saying because i just don't want to say things anymore and not follow through so i'm glad that you have that same passion my man Man, you, you listen, faith without works is dead, bro. Yes, sir. I'll be honest, like you, you picked up on the hard work, the grit. Mm -hmm. I will outwork you any day of the week and three times on a Sunday. Whoa. Uh, listen, nothing will stop me from finishing what God gave me to do. And I'm being honest, I'm not this might not be the smartest in the bunch, hmm. but I'm gonna tell you, you won't work harder than me. I will outwork you. Any single day, not you, but anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any motivational speaker, any life coach, any person who ever coach. Why? Mm. Because it's your work that defines the way you work. So if you, uh, you know, you you know exactly how we this was brought. You know what happened. You yes, you can sir. tell them about the ethics, the mindset, the, the development to putting this together, the 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 seriousness, the urgency. The it's the same thing. It's the same process. The venue, <laughs> we just promote, promote, promote. We get the tickets. I'm on the plane. Yes, I got sir. an international passport. I am there. I'll sleep on the couch. I don't I, don't worry about it. We'll come we'll on. Do it. And um, be in that space. Believe me, as I said, iron sharpens iron. You know, if you want to go far, go with somebody else. But if you want to go fast, go alone. But so you only true. can go so far. I don't want to go fast. I just want to be able to go the fur furthest I can ever go. And I know I can't do this alone. So I know God says, you know, when you go, tell somebody else. And I'm telling you. So let's go. Absolutely. Gershom, we're going to end off. And I want to end off. I always, or oh, I'm going to start to ask my guests these, this question at the end of every interview. Gershom, before we go, if you had one wish and one wish only before you pass, 
Mm. What would that wish be? That everybody that met me or heard from me or even heard a voice that would have said that I changed their life. Mm. For the better. For the better. I could put that part. For the better. Not for the bad. For the better. Wow. Once you came in contact with me, once you saw me, mm. it, once you heard my voice, once you became in my presence, you were never the same. Mm. When you leave me, you didn't have to come back again to find me, mm. but your life will never be the same. Your money will never be the same. Mm. Your relationship will never be the same. Mm. Your, your ability to think will never be the same mm -hmm. once you come into my presence. Why? Because you had an encounter with me because I had an encounter with God. Gershom Allen, from my heart to yours, know that I love you, know that I care. For all those that has joined in, we want to give you a big shout out. Le let us know in the comments how this has blessed you. And please feel free to go ahead and uh, go visit Gershom Allen's website, grinddailylife.com. And you can find everything in one stop shop right there, especially the book, barnesandnobles.com. And of course, Amazon as well. Gershom, I salute you, brother. Love you, man. Randall, you take care. And uh, let me just say um, a little word before I go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to say that whatever you do, let everything be done to your name, honor, and glory, and somebody's life be changed. Thank you so much, man. Amen. Amen. Bless you, brother. It's been a joy. Just want to see some final comments. This was amazing and insightful from Chantal. We want to thank Linda, Francois, Sachin, Theo, Kenneth, Christy, Steve, Ryan, Etienne, uh, Bintu, uh, Sunil, uh, Johnny, Wayne. We want to thank all of those that has joined and all of those that's going to watch on the replay. I hope you are blessed. And hey, like I always say, we are not here just to survive, but we are here to thrive. God bless you.